They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. rock a baby on a treetop. When the bl- wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall. And down will come baby, cradle and all. Well, what does any great lullaby do to us? Well, its rhythm, its cadence puts us to sleep. We become relaxed when we hear the cadence of the words. But rarely do we actually think about what the words are that are being spoken. There's really no need to do this. When you're trying to get a child to sleep, unless they're really wound up, all it takes is a couple times with this rhythm and cadence, and soon they'll drift off to sleep. This great lullaby, Rockaby Baby, has actually a really disturbing scenario that plays out if you really pay attention to the words spoken. There's a baby being rocked in a cradle at the top of a tree. Then the wind blows and it gets stronger and more violent. The cradle falls out with the baby in it and falls to the ground. Really? That's how it ends? That's how you're going to get your child to sleep? Thinking about this? Yikes. They were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. They incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their territory. Brothers and sisters, our reading today on this fourth Sunday of Easter is in his flock, the church. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we join Paul and Barnabas on their missionary journey. They have gathered the whole city of Antioch around them. Quite a stir has been raised. They have gathered both Jew and Gentile, both believer and non-believer. And what happens? Well, out of jealousy, some of the crowd violently opposed Paul. Even when Paul calls them out, saying that, well, in fact, it was your self-righteousness that put Christ to death and was the cause of his resurrection, they became even more enraged. They threw him out of the city. What was the fruit of Paul's courage standing in the face of that angry mob? Well, the non-believers saw his witness. They said, I want what makes him strong. I want what makes him courageous. I want what makes him so convicted. And they were eventually baptized. In our second reading from Revelation, we learn of the heavenly vision of John. He sees a church persecuted during his time. He sees a church dressed in white, clothed in Christ by their death, standing before the heavenly sanctuary, praising their king. He sees the witness of the martyrs standing before him. The blood of the martyrs is mingled with Christ's own blood. It mingles with the cornerstone of the church, Christ. It is the witness of the martyrs which builds the faith of the community. Friends, take a look around our country. The bombings in the Boston Marathon, a bomb even found close by in the McCook Airport, the institution of marriage being ripped apart in our Supreme Court, the horrors of abortion on display in Pennsylvania while people actually stand up in Gosnell and his actions, a constant false rhetoric that absurdly claims that the church is waging some sort of war on women, pornography becoming more and more mainstream and even being justified the low-income housing, even here in our own city, struggling to survive. A company found, founded by Margaret Sanger wanting to move into North Platte. Drug and alcohol abuse rampant on the streets, even here in North Platte. And our hunger and shelter issues, which remain all throughout the country. What's wrong? What's happening? What's going on in our world, and especially in our own country? The culture has rocked us into a deep sleep. We, the church, the flock of Jesus Christ, disciples of the Lamb, are all guilty at one time or another of being absorbed by the culture. Spend your way out of trouble. Drown your sorrows in a bottle. Fight hard for personal freedom at any cost. The great snoring sound we hear, subtle though it is, drowns the voice of the shepherd. How can we hear his voice if we are not awake and listening? My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. 
Christians, we are the flock of Christ. We are the sheep wandering out in the darkness of the world with wolves all around us. Those wolves, they, they want us to fall asleep. They want us to ignore the voice of the shepherd. Who are the wolves? Any voice contrary to the voice of Christ himself is a wolf. Think of our first reading from Acts again and just ponder that. What are the sure signs that the wolves are closing in? What are the things that we can see among us that tell us the wolves are close? Bishop Sheen said it best when he said, A propensity for violence, increased comfort and acceptance of public nudity, and a schizophrenic behavior in our society. We as Catholic Christians, we as a church need to wake up a little bit. We need to be alert and ready. We must have our ears tuned into the voice of the shepherd. In the first letter of Peter, it says, Be sober and your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that your fellow believers throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace, who calls you to his eternal glory, through Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you suffered a little. That was written 2,000 years ago. The world hasn't changed much. We always have to be vigilant. We always have to be alert and ready and listening to the voice of the shepherd. So friends, I tell you, don't be afraid to be awake and vigilant. Don't be afraid to follow the voice of the shepherd. What does his voice sound like? We've all heard it before. It's a voice of compassion, of peace, steadfast charity, of love of the Father and love of one's neighbor. Brothers and sisters, we're called to follow the voice of the shepherd through the dark valleys. We're called to stand up against violence and hatred. We're called to bring divine justice to our homes and to our streets. We're called to bring the light of Christ to the darkness of human hearts. We're called to act with humility and courage. That all starts in each of our own homes, in our families, and it moves to our workplace and then to our social lives, our social environment. We must listen every minute of every day for the voice of the shepherd. And when we hear his voice, we need to respond to his call. So don't be caught sleeping in your faith. 